All right. Heck yeah. Is it live? Testing. testing. One, two, three, four. Hello, hello. Testing. 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 One, testing. Testing. One, two. One, two. Buckle my shoe. Hello. All right. And we're live. Hey, how's everybody doing? So we are going to be brewing a toasted marshmallow stout today. Um, it's basically the one-gallon version that Kyle brewed a couple years ago. Yeah, buddy. He brewed uh, a five-gallon all-grain batch, and we're uh, just going to scale it down to a one-gallon extract. So we got people from Chile, Sweden, Denmark, Norway. Heck yeah. Right on. Was it probably evening time there? I'm assuming we got Brazil. We got some Texas. All right. So yeah, we're just playing around with some extract. It's Friday afternoon, something low key. Yeah. Want to have a 12 pack of this for uh, for the fall weather we're about to start hopefully having. So. Yeah. Heck yeah. And we're not monitoring this. It's just us. So if there's something that's messed up, just let us know. Yeah, we got the chat there, so we can see you. Yeah. If you can't hear us or see us, let us know. <laughs> so Kyle, yeah, you you made this recipe. I don't know, two three. 
four years ago probably at this point? Yeah, probably three years ago. Yeah, it was probably one of my favorite... It was delicious. ...stouts that we've made, mm -hmm. so... Um, yeah, it's got 14 ounces of specialty malts, which is pretty big for a small one-gallon extract. That's a lot. Yeah, and then just a pound of uh, dark dried malt extract. Tradish dark. Yeah, cool. we're just using the uh, grease for that. And then during the boil, we're just gonna have four ounces of lactose to give it a little that sweetness. And we're using some uh, Styrian Goldings for our hops, basically just a bettering hop. Yeah. So just scaled your recipe. And then obviously a Jet. pound of Jet pound of straight sugar. Yeah. <laughs> so Yeah, and then Emma did a little bit of research on this or maybe somebody I think commented so, I think someone commented on the last video. Yeah, so really what we we noticed with the first recipe was that the the char was really what kind of made it. It was great. The marshmallow char. So um and then somebody commented and said, if you use a smaller marshmallows, you get like greater surface area of charring. Which makes sense. So it does make sense. There's the more, old, more the char ratio. More, more. Uh, push it through the roof. More ridges. Do you know, it, this is going to be pretty boozy then at the, or no, did you take that we, into we, consideration? Yeah, we scaled it? this back. Oh, okay, so there's only a pound. Got Most it. of the recipes have like almost two. Got it. So. Okay. Cool. But we're going to, we're just doing a 30 minute steep. We already got our water at, um, 160 here. I turned it off because it's kind of annoying, but um, so we preheated our water. We cheated a little bit, but it's Friday afternoon, so I'm just gonna toss this bag in. So hold on one second there, Emmett. Okay. Yeah, dude, we got we got a uh, we got a kettle cam today, so figured we fire that up. A, a what now? A kettle cam. Ke oh, we got a kettle cam. Yeah, buddy. Kettle cam. So we got Dude, our, that's a sack right that, there. Dude, it's a big old sack. <laughs> it's a big sack. Is that going to absorb a lot of water? It, it didn't in the test batches oh, I did. Okay, I, I kind of put it in a bowl and squeezed it. Yeah. So, sure. but, and the nice thing about extract is if you are a little bit low, you can just top off your oh. fermenter. So I'm gonna, saying your mic is way too hot. So I'm going to see if I can adjust that. Mine's too hot? Yeah. Kind of have I, feeling. I, I talk loud too. Maybe I, part maybe, of the problem maybe bring it back to like an asmr asmr yeah i could just like whisper so we're gonna steep that i'm gonna set the timer for uh 30 minutes on my phone i'll try to from wales but currently in dusseldorf can't wait to watch the rugby. Yeah, rugby season is in full effect, it seems like. Kettle cam is sick. Go, cool, I'm gonna hit the, uh, I'm just gonna put it on the stove here. Put the timer for 30. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really know how to dial yours back, man. So we're, I'll just talk softer. I think that, that'll be the move. And then our sack is so big, it's not fully uh, submerged. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water. So we get full sack immersion. All right, let us know if that's better as far is that as better? the audio goes. Yeah, I just dropped it all back. And maybe I'll just try to talk louder. Yeah, so Isaac just finished brewing a brown ale relax and watch us but yeah it's gonna be a pretty uh easy brew day extract is kind of nice for that um man i, I i've kind of gotten back into brewing like the one gallon batches uh it's a super easy then just bottle up a 12 pack and bring them to people's houses and whatnot dip in the old sack you know it buddy so I don't know if Kyle's gonna join this brew day or not, but yeah, dude, I'm just trying, to, <laughs> trying to get the audio fixed. Yeah, I know. I'm just teasing. Yeah, you think that's good immersion, stack uh, immersion? Yeah, man, it was good to me. Sweet. So, I think Ooh. the the most fun part of the brew day is probably gonna be toasting these. Yeah, probably. I, I figure we'll do that during the boil. Sure. Show us something to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean that's basically it. I guess I could go over the 
gist of the recipe, dark extract. Sure. And then the um, specialty malts are flaked oats, uh, chocolate malt, a little bit of caramel 80, and then some roasted barley. Okay. Um, and then obviously the toast from the uh, marshmallows, I feel like worked really well with that roasted barley. Because mm -hmm. it is kind of sweet with the lactose and, the sh mm -hmm. and that, but the bitterness played, at least from memory, worked really well. Right. So. Yeah, so we have this new one gallon fermenter and we're starting to build out these uh, recipe kits. So if you have a suggestion for something that you want us to make, let us know. Currently, we're just kind of running through our greatest hits. Pretty uh, much. So Black IPA. Yep. What's our, what's our first one? The Citra. The Citra. Citra. So that was like one of our first, like really, you know, fun, cool beers that we made that we really liked. This was one of the first recipes we brewed and filmed yeah. and put on our, um, uh, what, our on YouTube the, channel. And all grain, yeah. This was just one of our all-time favorites. Yep, and it's getting into fall. And it's getting into fall, winter season. So... But yeah, I mean, that's kind of the beauty of these kits are easy to make. And yeah. Yeah, if people have a style they want to see, that is a good idea. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm kind of thinking more seasonal beers this time of year because it's, I mean, it's hot here. It's 80 in here right now, but. Yeah. Um, it literally is 80. Log beer kit. <laughs> log beer kit, yeah. I mean, you know, just go out to your uh, brewing bad, man. Just go out to your yard and find some sticks. <laughs> Hope for the best. Yeah, any, you can you can log up any kit by just throwing some sticks in it, really. Yeah, and hope you get which is what happened to us. One out of a million, yeah. one out of a million luck. Yeah. Uh, I just we're good. That's just okay, gonna sit cool. there. Got That's kind of loud and annoying. Yeah. What's up, dudes? Um, taco step start. Well, and it's like three forty-five. I've already eaten my my tacos today. <sighs> I know. It's a pizza Friday. Oh so. yeah. I was gonna say we could just eat more for these folks. That's but. true. <laughs> Probably not. That'd be weird. So it looks like we got quite a few folks from Germany in here as well. Yeah, that's so funny. The last time we did a live stream, a couple of weeks ago or mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, there were a lot of uh, people uh, across the old pond, which was interesting. Which is cool. Yeah, which is cool. But surprisingly, um, surprising breakdown. I see like a Russian name there. Right. That I'm not even going to try to pronounce. And then... The log beer kit. I think we. I think I saved some of that log yeast. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure the creator of that yeast uses it in his commercial beer. Daily, yeah. Yeah, so I mean it's his yeast, but it, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I still have some for playing around with. Yeah. Not for commercial use, obviously, but course, just for playing. Of course not. Is, is the yeast in the beast in here? He, Bro. I think I saw him what, at the uh, beginning. Really? Dude, do you have a job? I've, every brewing live stream I ever see, Yeast and the Beast is on. Nice. Oh, so many jobs you're like logged in a computer that you oh, can easily true. have a screen yeah. off to the side. Getting paid to uh, watch live streams. Netherlands. Yeah. Denmark, man. We found, we found the European time zone. Yeah. So what do we do? We added the um, grains here. Did we set a timer? Or are we just kind of eyeballing it? I did. Oh, wow. Dude, look at you. On the microwave and everything. Yep, on the microwave. Wow. So we'll let that hang out. I mean, 30 minutes is prescribed in the recipe. Yeah. I don't know an extract. I mean, you're basically just pulling the flavor out. You know, Got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, but it is, we, this recipe kit is just a 30-minute boil. Um, which is kind of nice and mainly because there's so much sugar from the marshmallows going in. Yeah. You don't, and plus with that, you're getting it off from the extract. You're not like waiting con for conversion or anything. Got so, it. Um, I guess if you were doing like a, wanted a lot of bitterness, you could do a longer boil and use less hops. Yeah. But I'd rather just throw some more hops in and do a 30 minute boil. Sure. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, we've been talking about this. We kind of just created the one gallon kit for beginners and then started using it and had a lot of fun brewing with it because it's like a quarter of the effort. Let's just call it one fifth of the it's like effort. like a tenth. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's so easy. Um, yeah, so it's kind of fun. So we've been, we've been brewing up these one gallon batches and like the beauty of it is that they're so fast. Yeah, you can literally so, yeah, like what, you know, do it in the background. Yeah, let's do a 30 minute mash whatever with steep 30 minute boil and then just you're done and the extract i mean years ago the extract wasn't good and you only had like one option but now i mean they have like dark yeah, extract sure, and yeah. extra light and light i mm -hmm. mean you have pretty much every 
yeah. you were kind of limited before, but now it's like you can pretty much get, yeah. you can pretty much brew any style, I feel like, with extract. Right. So it is kind of a, a nice entry point slash, I want to make a 12-pack of maybe a beer I don't want five gallons of, and I don't want to put a ton of effort in or spend a ton of money on ingredients. Mm-hmm. So. Right. Any of you guys is doing any small batch out there? I'm just curious. Um, Who's small batches? Some people are like only brew small mm-hmm. batches. Yeah. You know, two and a half gallon batches, yeah. one gallon batches. Belgian triple, nice. Some people only brew, seem to brew like 10 gallon batches. Belgian triple, first time brewing to style, any tips? Man, I, I've only brewed it a couple, with, and Ross was involved. And he, he did most of the heavy lifting on that. I would, I would go back and watch, or at least read the articles on those triples. Or did we do a double? Well, we did a quad. A quad. And we did a triple. The quad and the triple. Yeah. And the tri- those both came out really good. Mm-hmm. So I would, I would definitely read that article. Um, the candy, I mean, candy syrup, obviously, a, a good Belgian yeast. So you get that, the yeast character is a huge thing. Yeah. For sure. Chris Jackson, um, to- toast coconut stout. I uh, second that. Actually, Dude, that's that actually sounds a really good. good idea. Yeah. Do you know what some folks were doing instead of just regular marshmallows? They sell like a coconut marshmallow. Oh, really? And they're throwing those oh, yeah. in. Oh yeah. And they have like a toasted mm-hmm. thing. Oh, I bought some yeah, to test, some. and then mm-hmm. I ate them all. We all ate them. Yeah. <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> so that w- that would be good. That could maybe that could be something we mix up. Talk to us about option. Climber Beard Care products. I think that was a reference to me. I don't really do much, really. You shave. Yeah. <laughs> shave daily. Um, looks like there are a lot of people doing two and a half gallons, 15 gallon batches. Nice, dang. And how do you go through 15 gallons? Yeah. Like, that's do, a good do you have like, people over a lot? Because um, that's my thing when I start having that much beer it takes me a while to get through it all yeah unless i have you know people yeah. are coming over that then it goes quicker two five point two and a half gallon batches i typically don't drink too much of it homebrew club okay cool competitions october fest would be a good one yeah so the highland brewing company here in Asheville has um a claw hammer october fest they do um <clears throat> beer and completely unrelated to us uh, that is, this is water yeast in the beast. I'm about to drink a beer, but I need to hydrate first. I, I've been drinking it lately, and it's, it is good, man. That is a good it beer. It is really good. That is a really yeah. good beer. You, maybe they would like let us, uh, you know, clone it or something. That'd get real. Then they give us a lawsuit yeah. immediately <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Barn parties, huh? Barn parties. Oh, barn parties. That makes sense. I suppose if I had a barn. Um, yeah, I'd have parties. I'd have parties, yeah. yeah. In my barn. Like yeah. bonfires, yeah. Mm-hmm. I had a couple of buddies that had big barns growing up, and I could see that. Still, Alex J. Murphy, still a beginner brewer learning the... Ropes. Ropes. Roped ropes, all right. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think the well, best way to learn yeah. is honestly just to do it, doing it yeah. and, and don't stress out about it, mm-hmm. and then read a bunch and... right. Don't let li- don't listen to half the stuff you're eating. Yeah, <laughs> be selective right. on, on what you do. But there's mm-hmm. there's so many good resources now. It's crazy. Yeah, between the magazines and websites and YouTube's. Right. One metric. Well, we're on freedom units here. Yeah, so <laughs> it would it would be nice, but um, yeah, that's what Google's for. Yeah, I'm, I I just you know when you grow up with something. You just don't know it. Yeah. We never had to learn it. Yes, yeah. I feel like growing up, everyone was like, "We're all going to switch at some point." Yeah, I feel like yeah, that was really, a thing. That is. That was a thing. Like our that. whole childhood. Like at some point, you're going to have to yeah. learn, it, and then they just stopped having yeah, that conversation. It does make a lot more sense. Well, yeah, everything's divisible by tens. Right. Right. Wow. Great beers with extract. I think it has an unfair rep. Yeah, and I think a lot of that reputation it comes from 20 years ago when when the extracts weren't that great and then i think that just kind of lingered in the homebrew community just like a lot of other things have lingered yeah you know sure seven brews in learned a lot from us wow not sure how yeah <laughs> you might want to you know check out some other sources as well apartment brewer probably is the yeah and, and, sure, uh, Steve and martin, martin have really good info yeah uh the model of fridge we have a few of them 
The cheapest option is going to be like a chest freezer with just using. Um, yeah, like, like a fermentation a fridge. Oh, no, so you're going to have to show it in there. Here, I'll, I'll switch oh, the camera real quick. Gotcha. Put it right at, right next to the kettle. Just lay it down. No, 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 right up, like right in front of the kettle. Yeah, right there. There you go. Yeah, perfect. So if you, the cheapest way to control fermentation is going to be just getting a chest freezer and using just a cheap temperature controller like this. Um, and basically, you plug your chest freezer into into the controller and then you stick your temp probe into the chest freezer and set yeah. your temperature if you're looking for something smaller i would just go to like home depot or whatever heart, home goods store you have hardware store mm -hmm. and just look for a scratch and dent one yeah because <laughs> they're expensive yeah i mean yeah like you can get one of these fridges at like 900 bucks mm -hmm. right and then even if you do get a nicer fridge, you know, like this one, this fridge only goes down to, no, it right. only goes up to 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. So if you want to ferment at, you know, like say 68 or degrees 70. or 70 or degrees. Or do a diacetyl rest. Yeah, yeah, something like that, then you'll actually still need one of these. That. These are some, one of like the, one of the most handy pieces yeah. of gear. Yeah. They're cheap. Uh, yeah. How much do you, we have them on our site? I don't yeah. know how much they go for. They're but not much. Yeah. It's whatever it is. It's worth it. Yeah. And you, like my first fermentation fridge were like off Craigslist, you know, just the chest freezer. But now you, I feel like you can even get a chest freezer for a, a brand new one for like 200 bucks here yeah. in the States. So there's a bunch of options. But I would, I would definitely, if you're going to be buying one, either look, look at the specs, see what temperature it goes up to, down to. And then also make sure whatever you're going to be fermenting it fits inside of it. Because mm -hmm. um, like this one's great for like bottles. Can't but, see it, but. But yeah. So, but that one behind us, if you can see that, it works really well. But again, you, can, you can't do a diacetyl rest in it without the temperature controller anyway. Yeah. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? In the green bag? It is flaked oats, chocolate malt, and crystal 80 and roasted barley. So it's just our specialty malts um, that we're just kind of extracting some of them stout flavors. So yeah, cool. Alex says he's going to plant some hops. Oh nice. In the garden. Oh, you know what? We should do that now. We actually have not been we able to grow hops them. because we have massive oak trees up here in the yard, and then the backyard was shaded by neighbors' trees. Yeah. But all the um, all of the trees in the back have been. Um, Cut down. We finally cut the last one down after a branch fell off it and landed in the middle of my Sprinter Van windshield and completely <laughs> smashed it. So it's gone now. That it, was, tree, it was dead. The that tree. tree messed around. Yeah. I'm going to say messed around and found out. Yeah. Yeah. And I have, I grow hops at my house, but I have, a huge, I have a huge oak tree Yeah. and it gets dappled sunlight. Yeah. If you're going to plant them, put them in like full sun because yeah. my yield is like, I'm on my fourth season and my yield's terrible, so yeah. I'll probably move them at some point. But mm -hmm. uh, it's not there. It's nice to have fresh hot beers are awesome to brew in the fall. Yeah, like super yeah. super good. Yep. Uh, man, yeah, Luca. Oh wait, yeah, Luca says uh, just seen the fermenter update. So we have actually a couple more updates that we're going to release on that. I could grab the fermenter real quick. Yeah. and just show the top of it. May as well. Which would be cool. I'll grab it, but. Um, yeah, we're so, we're getting close. We're so happy about this, and you know, being done. But well, let me just grab it. Yeah, grab it. it back. So we approved, finally approved all the, all the parts, uh, for the safety lid. So production has started, which is awesome. So we're super stoked. And then Kyle's gonna get the camera ready. <laughs> Deep dive on Emmett's life. I don't know how interesting that would be. I did have a weird, a weird weekend in Chicago, but. Um, Dude, yeah, too bad they don't have the swingers clubs um, closer to Asheville. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have to travel so far. Yeah, we're hoping to be, we're hoping to get back into video, video swing of things. Um, this, we're, we're trying to live stream out to see if it works, and then we're, we're also obviously putting out our regular videos too, but. Um, the live streams are fun. I, I like chatting with everybody. Uh, 
Oh, buckets are great. I'm a big bucket man. The kegs are nice if you want a close transfer. Um, if you want to keep all the oxygen out, you know, having a, a more advanced keg is nice. But, I mean, you can brew really good. You could ferment, I guess, really good beer in buckets. Still just, you know, make sure they're clean. The main thing on buckets is the seals. You got to make sure to take those out and clean them. Um, that, that can get you down the road if you've been using them for a long time. Fifth year of growing hops, yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping, I, every year I hope it's gonna be a better harvest, but I just think I need to move mine into more sun and probably get them on drip. We had a pretty dry summer. Oh, there you go. That's the shot right there. Is it, is it only on that camera now? Uh, yeah, in a second, I'll, I'll pop it up here in a second. So we'll do a little keg update. Yeah, if anybody's jumping in, we're just brewing an extract marshmallow milk stout. It's just the one gallon extract version of the five gallon version Kyle brewed a number of years ago. So just really wanted that this fall and figured this would be an easy way to get uh, a 12 pack. So, all right, so here we go. Keg, somebody asked about the keg. They asked for an update. Um, this is the final version of the keg with all of the actual metal parts that we will be using. Uh, so the difference between this and the, you know, the initial uh, V1, I guess, of this is that this has custom tri-clamps here and they have a couple features that make them special. And then they have this oversized airlock that has a permanently attached tri-clamp removal tool. Oh, the PRV. So, oh, I said airlock. Yeah, PRV. Uh, PRV, yeah, pressure relief. So, you know, you just release the pressure like normal. Even if you don't, though, we've designed the threads on this to actually clear the opening and depressurize safely on its own so it before it's out. completely unscrewed. So there's no way anything is going to pop off of this as long as you take this off. So now, once that's off, this is completely depressurized. And to remove the tri-clamps, we have special tri-clamp nuts, which fit this tool. And we kind of like, gave, we kind of uh, built in a little bit of extra play on the tool here. So, you know, you could just kind of like get it on there and easily and not really have to, you know. Search for it. Yeah, aim very well. Um, so, the thing is you have you it's it's impossible to like turn this with your fingers while it's actually tight and that's the whole point so you can't just you know remove that while this is in and the keg's under pressure you have to take this out first and and now it's completely depressurized you can loosen it with this take it off with this another thing we designed into the tri clamp is um, i'm gonna stick this back in here so it doesn't make noise another thing we designed into the tri clamp is like a little l sort of on the right here. You can kind of see a little L on this, the end of the clamp here. Um, previously, you could just like loosen it so much and then actually just force that over and jam it over. Um, this way, you have to actually take it, you know, all the way off. So now it's completely loose. So we'll clear that and then you can now swing it past the end of the L there. So that's it. Um, Basically forces you to depressurize yeah. it before you remove it. Mm -hmm. and it's, when you look at it, it's a simple design. It doesn't take any longer to put on than the thumb yeah. screws and mm -hmm. you know, peace of mind goes a long way. No one's going to get hurt. Right. Pressure's, and, pressure's no joke. Yeah, pressure's even, no joke. Even yeah. 10 PSI. Yeah, and you'll see in the video that, you know, I'm going to switch um, views real quick. You'll see in a video that we have, you know, coming up, um, I found some footage of somebody filling up uh, like a, a fairly large tire for like a tractor or something, just 150 PSI, and they had it in a tire filling cage. Right. And it blew up. Dude, that thing just completely destroyed this steel uh, tire filling cage. So that was just 150 PSI. Right. You know, even half that, I can tell you from experience, is quite a bit. Um, we did a lot of testing on these and we had them up to, I kid you not, we had one of them up to 700 PSI. It didn't blow up 
It didn't explode, but it literally blew up like... It looks like a blimp. It looks like a blimp. It looks like a hot dog. Yeah. Like so, an overcooked hot Which dog. is what you want. Yeah. You don't want it to explode. You want it to so let stretch. Me, I'm going to switch back to this keg real quick, and I'll explain why we put this little L here. We talked to a lot of professional brewers about tri-clamps, how they're used, and what some of the biggest risks are. And I'll tell you what, we heard a lot of like crazy horror stories. Yeah, horror stories. So one of the most common things we heard from brewers is that the, the biggest risk with tri-clamps is just like bumping the thumb screw, or however you've tightened it, and having it swing off and then, you know, wart, or not sorry, not wart, but just like beer, fermenting beer is just, or a finished beer just starts blasting everywhere. Or a cap flies off. Yeah, or a cap flies off. We're actually both, it's yeah. probably gonna happen. So that's why, that's the other reason why we designed the L on there. So, so once you're done doing whatever you're gonna do, you know, say you wanna swap this out for a hop dropper or spunding valve or something like that, you just pop it back on here. You use the tool to tighten it back up. And then once you have it tight, and you're sure it's not going to leak, you just go ahead screw and in. screw the PRV back in, and then you can pressurize it, you can do whatever you want, yeah. and you know, you're done. Yeah, so. yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet, so. Yeah. The only change we're like kind of toying with right now is that this is a metal part. We have a prototype for a plastic part as well. The metal but PRV is pretty think, sweet. Yeah, the metal is a little bit more expensive, but we think we're just gonna go ahead and probably go with the metal. Yeah. We were worried about maybe galling, but, um, but I, the threads are loose enough and it's not under so much tension that we don't think that's gonna happen, so. Yeah, it's been pretty smooth. So we're still, we got time while production's going on on the, on the lid and the track lamp. The only other change we made is we fully welded the thermal well in. So there's no, there's no threads on this now, so it's completely sanitary, which is good. Um, and you don't have to worry about like leaking. So we, oh, yeah. we just went ahead and made yeah. that change while we were in there. Yeah. And then the final change we did was we, we were literally cutting all of the handles off all of the 400 keg bodies we have. And, then and we're re putting retrofit handles on. Just, and it's like a thousand times better. It's way, so much better. Just way more room. So I don't know how much... Um, Let's not go into how <laughs> <The> it's <financials. laughs> working out business-wise. But the thing is, like, we don't, I don't know, we, we certainly don't want to sell something that's going to be dangerous. No. And we also don't want to sell something that's going to suck. Right. And we just realized, like, God, this is such a pain with these handles. We just couldn't deal with it anymore. Like, screw it. And one day I just cut them off and put, like, a crappy copper handle on there. It's like, this is going to be awesome. Yeah. So, so we and just these, designed some new ones. These came out real nice. Yeah. So. Anyway. But that's where we're at with that. Yeah. So hopefully... Production is starting Monday and 45, 50 days for production. Then we got to pack them up. And so hopefully sooner and later. Yeah. We're getting to the end. Yeah. Those close-up shots from the shopping channel. <laughs> what number do I call to buy? Salesman of the, the I don't even right know here. our phone number by heart. That's pretty bad. Yeah, you should probably Google that. Yeah, it's probably on our website. We've changed it, actually. Yeah, definitely. I'm, it's Friday, man. I'm just chugging some shine here. Shipping the UK? Good. Yeah, we, we can definitely look into it. Um, definitely shoot us an email. Um, I'll have Sam, our, our shipping manager, um, look into that. I don't know if there's special, like, shipping for UK, but he'll look into that. I'm not sure. But we can, we can pretty much ship anywhere. It's just going to be as a cost-effective. Yeah. So. All right, we got four minutes oh, yeah. and 30 seconds left in the old mash here. Perfect. Um, it's or the four steep. Do you want to just call it early? Oh, sure. I was, I was actually just going to get a beer. Well. Oh, well, I'd, I'll do a beer. Yeah. Let's do a beer. That's just me. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Should I get a beer? Thumbs up for beers. Thumbs down for beers. Thumbs for beers. There's any thumb for a beer. Uh, so what are you guys doing? So who is it? Is it uh, Brucho? Brucho's in here? It's like 2 o'clock right now? 1 o'clock West Coast? What time is it here? I don't even know. It's 4 o'clock, man. 4, 3, yeah. 2, 1 o'clock there? Yeah. There. Why don't you deal with that? And what time's that? I'm going to get us some beer. Where, I, think, I was thinking we'd finish this, maybe this uh, last... Yeah, we got some cans that are probably oxidized by now that we're going to try and finish. No, I think this should be good. That one's still good? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
So we're gonna do, what is that, a hazy? Yeah. The, uh... We are brewing a one gallon, just a one gallon easy extract uh, marshmallow milk stout. We got our, we're just steeping some, some of the specialty grains here. Some, uh, I should probably remember this by now, but we got some oats in there. We got some chocolate malt, some crystal malt, and some roasted barley. And then we're gonna bring it up to a boil, add some dark dry malt extract, boil for 30 minutes, and the toast some marshmallows. Kyle brewed this a uh, number of years ago, five gallon batch, so it's just a scaled down version. And I'm excited to have a 12 pack of it, honestly. Yeah. So crushing a, what, a wheat beer. Cheers, man. It smells really good. Yeah. It, does. it is what, four o'clock here? So everyone's been asking us to make, well, well actually, you want to, we we'll get two minutes. We Every Europeans are already drunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's about, I mean, it's late there, right? Five hours, nine o'clock there. Everyone's been asking us to fire the brew days back up. We do have plans to do that, like we said. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, actually, we're going to do some live streams. And really just because we're doing a bunch of recipe testing and it's, it'd be really difficult to do all the recipe testing and the filming and editing. So right. we're just going to live stream it. But we do have active plans to bring, um, back, the brew yeah, days. bring back the brew days. So They take a lot of work. They do take a lot of work. Time. It's a lot of time. And it's actually a lot fun. of money. Yeah. It is a lot of fun. Um, but we do have like a membership option on the channel now so actually if we can you know get some people to sign up to that actually it would make it much more attractive and easier to to crank out some more brew days so yeah so you just hit join or something like that so yeah I'm not sure how that works but yeah we'll take all your money yeah pretty much yeah we plan i think our goal is to try and live stream once a week yeah if, until yeah until we uh Emil. can't do it anymore Emil. But, Emil. so you know, maybe we'll, we'll, we're still figuring out days and times that seem to work best. Yeah. Um, we did one a couple weeks ago with White Labs. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and it went, it went really well. Yeah. Um, but That's it's, fun. you know, I feel like, I don't know if a lot of people will work during, you know, you're working, you can't join, but it seems like we got a good crew in here, so. Yeah. S Peter F, 6 a.m. in Aussie, I assume that means Australia. Um, what are you drinking, man? At 6 a.m.? Yeah. Hopefully coffee. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crush some metal. Live brew day, baby. Let's go. So do live brew days get demonetized if you have music on? I would assume so. I would assume so, too. Well, I mean, if it's not copyright. Yeah. Yeah. True. 2310. Nice. Sweet. One gallon. Yeah, one gallon batch is, it's nice. It's easy. You really don't need much equipment if you're just getting into it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's how I got into it. Yeah. Extract with steeping grains. Oh, so. it's our timer. Oh, I should probably uh, fire the kettle can back up here. What are we doing? We're going to take that out? Yeah, I'm going to put it in this bowl. Okay. So why don't you hop up there and I'll uh, switch this this camera angle. Wait, hold on one sec. Oh, got to get the good view. Yeah, dude. Can't be opening a lid without no, a good I, view. No, I, I need, we need the reveal, the prestige. All right, man, you're, you're cleared. Clear to lift off. Clear to lift. So, Marshmallow Milk Stout, one of our all-time favorite recipes. Brewed it for the first time a couple years ago. It was so good. And one of the things we wish we, after tasting it, would have done was just use more marshmallows. Because the marshmallow flavor was there, but it was just like a little light. You want another one of those and do a little... You know, make a little bridge. Oh yeah, we could do that. Look at that. There you go. All you need is two mash paddles for that. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Perfect. And nice then I'm, I'm gonna bring it up to. This is kind of loud, but. Yeah. 
<clears throat> so we'll bring that up to a boil. What up, Atomic Cops? We are, what are we hopping with? Steering Goldings once that boil starts, so. Gonna hit the bars. Nice, I don't blame you. Look at that shine. Uh, the fermenter, we should probably show that. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we have one with some beer in it here, I guess. This was a batch going wrong. Yeah, we've got some sarsan over here. Whatever you want to do. Let's do this because it's just here. I don't know. This doesn't look the best. And this is kind of an interesting thing to talk about. But this was, um, this was like one of our first test batches. And we've just, we've left it around because it's so weird. Um... But it's a, you can see there's like a lot of chunky stuff floating in here. What we discovered was that if you add like a normal amount of whirl flock for, as you would for say like a five gallon batch, it just makes this crazy pillowy, cloudy, clumpy mess at the bottom and, and instead of. Like, it never settles. Yeah, it settles, but it never, it doesn't like compact yeah. basically. So just floaty pillows. Yeah, actually, you know what? This does look like garbage. Let's yeah, grab the, let's grab this one with star sand in it. But yeah, that's what we're gonna ferment it in, and we'll probably pop it in here, or we'll just, you know, put it on the countertop. It's a one gallon, and I don't know. It's gonna be so dark, and it's gonna have so much marshmallow in it that I feel like we could probably just do it on the countertop and not even worry about temp control, and it would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So these are are like 1.25 gallon fermenters. And basically um, it allows you to get like a full gallon into bottles when you're done, um, when you're done brewing. So it yeah. basically fills up, our bottles are slightly below 12 ounces, so it fills up 12 of those perfectly. So it's just like a little beginner yeah. uh, kit, but you know, pretty simple, just bottle off of here and Works really well. You got your markings on the back. Uh -huh. So that's, that's what we'll be fermenting in. Yeah. Peaceful inner prints. Uh, yeah, dude, it's your whirl flock. So if that's happened to you, just dial back the amount of whirl flock you're using. Yeah. And that should help. We Google Im Google image searched it. I just did like a reverse image search. And somebody had actually like A-B tested because they had it happen a couple times. Yeah. And figured out that that was the issue. So. And I, I feel like I rarely put them in anymore just because i forget the world flock yeah let's be honest and i'm not like worried about yeah. flocculation and right. like totally clear beer unless i'm doing like a really nice right. you know pilsner or something but yeah. even then you know yeah beginners man and lazy people like us on fridays <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so if you're just joining, we're brewing a marshmallow milk stout, and we've started uh, brewing these one-gallon kits because we made a one-gallon kit for beginners, so we're you know doing a bunch of recipe development, and um, shortly after, I mean immediately after we started brewing the, the recipes, the new recipes, we just discovered how much fun it is actually just to brew a one-gallon batch of extract beer. It's so easy, and it's so fast, and this kind of makes it more fun. You don't end up with as much beer, so I guess you know, like the effort to yeah. beer ratio is skewed quite a bit. Yeah. But like the activity, like the fun level of the activity, bring a, a, a five gallon batch of beer can kind of you know. I mean, it depends. Beer into work territory. If you do it for us, it's like actually your job. Yeah, I mean, um, it, de it depends. If you do it a lot. Yeah, but. I think if you enjoy that process, yeah. you're gonna enjoy it. But this is like, you don't even have to think. It's like, yeah. it's literally, it's like yeah. following a brownie recipe that's like a box mix, you yeah, know? Yeah, right. So, but yeah, but you only get a gallon versus yeah. a keg. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess personally, I mean, I would probably rather have like five gallons of this than one gallon. Mm-hmm. Are you gonna, but it is, you know. It is barley wine season. Someone's asking if we're gonna be doing any barley wines. Okay, so we'll add that to the list. So what, yeah. were the, what was the other recommendation? Coconut, toasted coconut, stout. Yeah, which would be nice. Barley wine. Um, uh, I have some really nice barley wines at home that I've been kind of waiting 
to open for winter from uh, Jackie O's. Right. They do a lot of big stouts and uh, barley wine, so. What is your brew house efficiency for the uh, extract? I think it's 100%, baby. Uh, for BIB, BIAB. Um, 70% on beers up to 1070 is, you can pretty much nail that. If your starting gravity is above 1070, just drop your the brew house efficiency down a few points to compensate. How often do we brew? Box mix beer. Box mix beer. I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Dude, that would be kind of funny if it came in like a brownies a box. cake box yeah <laughs> or like box, box wine like somewhere like that. all right uh z bag is it cool if we just uh steal that that idea is that cool i, I think so because that's pretty cool that's pretty funny so somebody said tropical what was it tropical stout with citrus and i and that, to it. I, that's a style i've never had i don't think yeah i don't i can't say that i have either you know it's what? not like if I was at the brewery, that wouldn't be like the first thing I would. And I don't even know, I honestly don't even know what makes it tropical. Is it probably the hops and the yeast? Yeah, some New Zealand hops. Okay. Maybe. Chocolate well, strawberry stout recipe made last year. Nice. Did Hopefully that means that you actually brewed it. I liked it. It was good. Which one was um, that? Oh, box mixed beer that tastes like brownies. Oh, Dude, gotcha. That would be pretty awesome if we made like a chocolate stout beer, brownie beer, that came in a brownie box. That'd be cool. Dude, you guys are hired. <laughs> Starting pay, dollar per hour. <laughs> Starting pay, Congratulations. as much beer as you can drink every day. Um, I think someone said brown ale up there. 56%, um, I would do a double crush. Um, maybe check your pH. 56 is pretty low. Unless yeah, you're brewing... Check your hydrometer. Yeah. If you're brewing super high gravity beers, maybe. But even then, I would do a double crush. Check your pH. Make sure your, cal your hydrometer is calibrated for the temperature you're taking the readings at. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 56 is low. We can say with certainty that you should be able to get 70% on every like mid-level to low-level ABV Up beer like that you seven. do. Yeah, six to seven for so sure. So if you're not getting that, then... Shoot me an email if you have one of our systems for yeah, sure. Yeah, shoot them an email. But the most common um, thing that we see is that just it's like hydrometers, you know, you maybe you're using a refractometer or you're not temp correcting. And oftentimes it's a measurement error. Or it's hot. It's just the wrong temperature. Yeah, exactly. That was what I'm saying oh, is yeah, that yeah. you're taking the measurement and you're not temp correcting. Yeah. Or, and you can really only temp correct to a certain, yeah. to an extent. It won't go And then correct. it's off. Unless you get like a mash temp hydrometer, which we do have. They're not cheap. Um, they're not super expensive. They're like 25 bucks. But For you, know, hydrometer, you will expensive. break it if yeah. you're like us. So. Um, uh, English bitter. Traditional yeast and yeast would like to see a one gallon traditional lager kit. I agree with that. Just simple, clean. What's your, what's your go-to hop on your traditional lagers? A traditional hop, I'm assuming. It's just one of the nobles. Dude, can we do, can we like co-brand um, a beer kit with Lucky Charms? With remember, Count Chocolate. Yeah, yeah remember, um, what was you that the like, cereal, that cereal Pico, Pico Brew thing that kind of eventually imploded? <laughs> was one, was one of them. co-branding stuff with actual breweries. Yeah, it was one of the ex-Microsoft guys, yeah. I think, execs. We could co-brand with Lucky Charms. I'm sure they would, they'd sign right up. Yeah. <laughs> General Mills or whoever that is. Where is the distilling? Um, in New Zealand. Yeah, speaking of distilling, we, we're going to be doing some more distilling content soon. Um, oh, we got a boil going on here, my dude. Oh, cool. Perfect. We, um, we are going to be doing more distilling soon. Um, we are partnering with a, a brewery that's opening a distillery here in Asheville, and we're going to be doing some distilling content there, and we're going to be linking up with our, our good bud, Jesse, from the Still It slash Chase the Craft YouTube channel, and we're going to be doing some more stuff with him soon, so Noble German Hops says Yeast and the Beast. Yeah. Kind of makes sense if you want a traditional. <laughs> Figure out how to ask. So we got a boil. We heated it up to a boil. We've turned the, um, you turned it off? I just turned, just turned it down. I just turned it down a little okay. bit. Cool. So Are you gonna add this guy? Half, half, half now. 
Oh god. Oh, I was supposed to add this earlier. I mean, does, does it matter? No. It doesn't matter. It just needs to go in at some point. Yeah, it needs so, to go in now. Yeah, dude, a good thing. He I like to do it. The guy that doesn't know what he's doing start, here. Start drinking. Yeah. Goes out the window. Um, I, I like to, I typically add the extract before I bring it up to boil. All right, we've already made a mistake here. We almost forgot to uh, add the uh, Dry mold extract. extract. Do you want me to stir while you're doing that? We got, sure. a, we got a little smash battle? Uh, I, I put them away already. Where'd you put them? I cleaned them. Oh, dude. Let's unclean them. Oh, dude, just, struggle bus just over dump here. It in. All right, I'm going to let you deal with that now. Just went for it. I did. Okay. Living on the edge, buddy. All right. I'm going to see. It's now full of your project. The uh, batch I brewed the other day went swimmingly. I was drinking coffee, not, not chatting. So we added a pound of the uh, dark dry malt extract in there. And it turned the heat. I just turned the heat off while I added that. So Ross grew the hops at his house. Sadly, uh, very sadly, Ross moved to Colorado many, many miles from here. 1,500 miles. If you're not from the U.S., it's 1,500 miles from Fort Collins, Colorado, which is where he is at now, to Asheville. And here's the, here's the sad, sad irony. Emmett and I both lived in Fort Collins, Colorado for like four years. We moved here. Thankfully, we overlapped with Ross, and then Ross moved to Fort Collins. So... He moved out there to um, his lady got a, a new position at New Belgium, and, he's, and he transferred to the he's still out working there with as well him, yeah. in New Belgium. So, anyway, um, the hops were at Ross's house, so we could just like go to that guy's knock house, on the door. Knock on the door. You're like, yo, be kind of funny. It would be. They probably, I'm sure they're sitting on there. Yeah, I should so, drive by. I mean, this is it seems dissolved. We don't have any. Wait, hold on, hold on. I mean, oh, no, I, I thought both cams were out. No, dude. Dude, I went all, to all this trouble. To... My friends never started drinking until after, but it's a smart move. Yeah, I'm terrible once I start drinking. I never, I don't drink typically when I'm brewing. Give them that slow pour, man. That's what they're here for. When I brewed with Ross on St. Patrick's Day, a couple of years back, burnt myself pretty good. Uh, <laughs> just because we were drinking, not paying attention. So I'm just adding half. Okay, so we're adding some stereo and goldings here. Some bitterings. Cool. And that's, I'm going to set, do you mind setting the timer while you're over there? Yeah, sure. Just set it for 15 if you would. 15 minutes? Yeah. So. Uh, timer. Okay, timer. And then. One. Five. Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Start. Sweet. Cool. Best beer happens if you drink. I mean, it, yeah, it all works out. It, it all works out. Earned that bicycle. Is that a New Belgium reference? Oh, yeah. You might want to, may need that. Maybe not. The mash battle? We good? I think I'll be all right. Okay. Oh, we get, thankfully we caught that on the old uh, kettle cam. Getting crazy. Don't want to turn it down at all? We good? I'd probably... Should we just boil over and... Give just them, go home. Give them what they want. Just go home. <laughs> Boil over and leave it and so, deal with it on Monday. It's funny because I know we, I know that is what you guys want. We did just, uh, somebody just commented that the other day on like the hose video I set up. Yeah. They were disappointed that they didn't see a hose pop off and wart spill everywhere. <laughs> that's what the people that's, expect. That is pretty entertaining. Programming. That's, yeah, what the people expect from us at least. I mean, I feel like I've had like one flawless brew day in my entire life. And then I probably screwed something up on the fermentation but, side. But you know? nobody, nobody saw no it. Saw it. No one saw it. No, no. Yep, fishtails, dude. They're a real thing. We'll call that good. Uh, do you know what we should do so we don't forget when there's when this buzzer goes off? Yeah. We're gonna add the hops, and then we should start toasting these because that'll oh, give okay. us 15 minutes yeah, to 15 toast minutes, those sure. so yeah this is a 30 minute boil um 
There's no reason to boil any longer. Do we need to take the, the swap out out of the fridge, or are we get a good temp for that? It was at like 88 oh, for so. Good. so. Okay, cool. There's no mistakes, only happy access. I, I agree with that with the home brewing too. Yeah. Our, our recipes on the roof father. Our recipes, maybe. I, I need to look into brew father and how it works. I, I've used it. I like it. I've been using beer smith so long that it's just what I keep using, but I, I do want to start playing around with it more. Um, our recipes are just on the website. So you could easily just add them to Brewfather if they're not already there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, a, you know, scale to your equipment, depending on what you have and your efficiencies. But we have all the numbers on there, uh, poundage. So mm -hmm. if you're not in the States, you'll just have to convert it. But, but we need to look into Brewfather. It's pretty slick. It's like yeah. The interface. I mean, we've used it some. We have. Yeah. We just are still kind of stuck. Yeah. Excuse me. I've been using Beersmith Smith. for so yeah. long that it's just easy, but we use uh Beersmith on uh a um what what's that computer company with like the cow print on it? Like back in the day. Somebody oh, like E Machine? No. Gateway. I mean, gateway. Gateway two was it Gateway three thousand? Oh yeah. Two thousand. Something like I think it was two thousand. Gateway two thousand? That's a computer we use, and we're, we're running uh, Windows 95 yeah. with uh, Bearsmith on it. Yeah, it's, so it's uh, it's been so around a while. Know. Are you using actual marshmallows? Heck yeah, we're using the old Jet Puffed Minis. Expect a lot of Troub. Ah, uh, I mean, we didn't have a ton the last time we brewed it. If you, I, I found if you put them in, like with a couple minutes left, they just absorb right in. It's just yeah. sugar. Yeah, that'll dissolve. But maybe they were talking about like the green or hops I'm not adding that much hops yeah i don't know probably not i don't know we so try this toasted marshmallow extract we have toasted marshmallow extract actually remember we bought some kind of pricey stuff and added it to some beer and it was nowhere good get with 2000 baby we um <laughs> 2000 bucks. we uh, we it wasn't as good as the actual marshmallows Maybe we just did it wrong. Maybe we were using the wrong stuff. Maybe or it wasn't wrong enough. dosage. Or, yeah. yeah. Or maybe it was added, too much. Added it at the wrong time. Yeah. Maybe we didn't say the right words when we did it. It wasn't. We weren't vibing the right way. But just, we didn't like it as well as the actual toasted marshmallows. Oh, the gelatin settled in his bottles. Ooh, we kegged it last time. So we'll find out if we have issues in the bottle. So I'm wondering, does that will the will the gelatin in there actually like clarify the beer then? Yeah, well, make the yeast settle out and like make yeah. it clear. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's such a dark beer. Yeah, that... it doesn't matter, right? I mean, well, it would matter, I guess, but. You should get Josh Weissman to make you know, homemade marshmallows. You know I'm... what? We probably should. It'd be amazing if you would. After but... we made the video about Josh Weissman, and we were legitimately salty about like the fact that his video was ranked number one. At least I thought, you know, I think I may have missed an opportunity there to actually make a friend <laughs> instead of an enemy, and we probably have made an enemy. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't blame him if we reach out to him. He's like, no, screw you guys. Right. <laughs> That's what I would say. For sure. Him. For all you still using bottles, step to kegs. Yeah, kegs are definitely easier. Um, oh, it's a cool man. It'll be in on bottles. I mean, it's it's nice to have like a couple big like big beers sometimes, you brewed yeah. that you age out for like a year. Yeah. Sometimes I wish we just had a bunch of old. You yeah. know, it's just like you know, super dank stout with all kinds of crazy stuff and you know toasted coconut or whatever yeah and or like some brat beers and some saisons and stuff that have just been chilling for a while in bottles yeah. you know and kind of just like good variety of that you could just sort of like sort through like it's your wine collection right. or something you know your wine cellar you, it's you just, just have in to your bathroom you just have to drink them before the they peek out wide trailer but you can pretend like it's your wine cellar right yeah but I mean, kegging is way easier, trust me, you know, yeah. it, it, but it is, it, nice is to have, it is nice to have some bottles. Yeah, it is a pain Especially if you're model. using cages and everything. Yeah. Um, so anyway, just jumping in, we're just doing a, a marshmallow milk stout. We're going to probably maybe a toasted marshmallow milk stout. Yep. We're going to toast them. Yeah, kegs are great until you have a gas leak. We've, I've lost so much gas over the years. Yep. Speaking of bottles. So we'll probably be, um, I'll probably be canning some of these and bottling some of them. So like this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. You didn't see it, but I just pulled this out of a bottle fridge that's right over there. And it's a 15% stout from one of our 
local favorites. Imperial Stout with Tahitian Vanilla, Vietnamese Cinnamon, Maplewood Smoked Sea Salt, and Double Dipped in Cacao Nibs. It's I wish really I had good. like... Ten of them. Yeah. A hundred, honestly. I was going to say fifteen. Yeah. yeah. Let's open this guy up. Is that from Burial? Yeah. Yes. It's from Burial. Yeah. So and we'll then do, uh, bottling tip. Just, just use just, a sugar cube. Just the tips bottle. I'm addition. sure that would work well. Um, I mean, that's essentially, I guess, what all the little little tabs are they're selling. Yeah, essentially, it's just smaller cubes. Oh yeah, yeah. I would never bottle ten gallons. You'd have to be out of your mind. Would you recommend Sankey over Corny kegs? That's all I have. I mean, if you already have them, go with what you have. Um, I've always been Corny, I think. Is that, that's the soda one. Um, just because that's what I bought. But keep everything the same. Don't mix them because the fittings um, are different from my memory. I remember having that issue at some point in my life and it was, kind of a pain because I always take my fittings out and clean everything and things would get mixed up um, so definitely just stay with one and I don't really think it matters which one you have as long as you just stick with that um, I think corny is probably what all the reproduction stuff is like I don't know if there's much stanky well wait stanky is that the is that commercial yeah I mean dude this is like motor oil I would so Sankey, I mean, on the homebrew side, you're probably going to have more luck finding stuff um, on, you know, just using the regular homebrew kegs. I, I don't know much about Sankey, I'm not going to lie, um, just because it's typically used in commercial settings. Commercial equipment? Probably not. Um, Are we ever going to make commercial? Yeah. Equipment? Is that the question? It just seems like you need a lot of space to make that large of equipment. And it's not really what we know. I mean, neither yeah. of us have ever worked in a commercial brewery. No, I've brewed on commercial equipment twice in my life. So I've right. been home brewing for a long time. So we kind of, you know, keep it, keep it to what we know. Yeah. Oh, we got someone from France. So is anybody Bonjour. out there canning? Is anybody canning? Kegging, bottling, what's everybody doing? I'm okay. assuming it's a mix. Ooh, yes. 15, 15% stout. Uh, get us in the mood for this marshmallow milk set we're brewing. It's like so little head, it's amazing. Yeah, and it's so good. Oh, man. Canning is too expensive. I agree. Yeah. It's very expensive to get into. You can easily get into kegging less expensively. Okay, a lot of people bottling. Yeah. That's awesome. Won't be paying for CO2. Yeah, it saves you a bunch of time, but bottling is, is a lot less expensive. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's, from the comments, seems like, a lot, you know, a lot of people, you start bottling and then move to kegging. Um, and you can get used kegs fairly inexpensively. Sixty-four ounce resealable bottles. Yeah, uh, like the like twisties, a, like the metal a, twisties, like a two-liter. Remember, um, Martin had those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. Those and were cool. Then, uh, yeah. Wow, like he, he's got sixteen gallons in fermentation. He's gonna bottle all that. Props to you, that's crazy. I can't even imagine how many bottles that is. The biggest brewing system that we have is uh, 20, it's like a, we call it 20 gallon kettle, but it's like almost 22 gallons. And then it basically designed to brew 10 gallon batches or five gallon batches. Um, so I've never personally had a need to brew more than 10 gallons. Um, and everybody's needs are different, but for me, um, I typically prefer to have multiple different varieties on tap. Um, so like if it's something I really like, I'll do 10 gallons, but other than that, I'm doing two and a half or five.
What's the most beer you made at one time? 20 gallons? 15. Yeah. We... 15 when Ross was in town. I brewed a basically a decoction. I did a big, big stout, like 1.1, 1.5. And then I put those grains in another kettle and then got another 10 gallons out of that. So yeah. it was 15 gallons total, but out of one mash. So, um, but that's the largest I've ever done. And it was a lot of work and it was a long day. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I don't know if it was worth it. <laughs> I mean, it was, but uh, 15 gallons is definitely the most I've done. Peanut, pecan, and coconut stout. Okay. I I, I really like um, yeah. nut, nuts and stouts. We have to sell that a little bit more for me. <laughs> I I, yeah. Well, I this, has, this, this has nuts in it, right? Didn't, didn't I just say that? Some barrel puts a lot of it, uh, different types of... It wouldn't surprise me because there's no head on it. Uh, cacao, t-shirt, vanilla, cinnamon. No, not in this one, but they do often. They put like yeah, oh yeah, different types of nuts. In I went beer. to kegging after my first batch. Yeah, clearly I knew right away this was the hobby for me. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people bottle their first couple batches and then figure out a way to get a used keg, or go to our website yeah. get a new keg. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Worst salesman ever. Yeah, go get yourself a used keg. Yeah. I mean, honestly, though. That's the best way to get yeah, into it, it. Yeah. You, you, know, can, you can find used corny kegs. They're cheap. They don't come without. There's a reason they're cheap, I guess I'll say. We, we've had. Yeah. I don't think we've ever bought a new corny keg. We've bought a lot. Maybe like one or two. But we've had probably 10 or more kegs I mean, over the years. 30 years old at or this 15, point, right? yeah. And we've had a lot of, the problem with buying used kegs is that the minute you like mismatch the lids or the fittings, you're screwed. Um, they, Cause they, they just like, they're not as standardized. They weren't as, you know, super like perfectly standardized. And a, our, and a lot of our kegs were intermingling. Yeah, and that's a great way to drain a tank of CO2 is by mis accidentally mismatching a lid. You think it's matched, you think your ball lock fitting is matched and it's not and you drain your entire tank of CO2, all your beer is flat, you're pissed. That's happened to us so many times. So we're actually gonna ditch all of our old corny kegs and then switch over to um, all new kegs once the production is completely done. Are you gonna serve a nitro? No, we're gonna bottle them and we'll probably bottle it on the lower end of carbonation. We're only doing a gallon, so. Yeah, so this is the one, our one gallon kit um, and it comes with bottles, carbonation tabs. It'd be awesome if we could, you know, send out a one gallon nitro kit. But I guess you maybe could uh, get a little mini keg and a little nitro yeah, canister. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, so when the 15 off. minutes left, add the rest of the packet of hops. If I would have read the directions the first time, it wouldn't have screwed up. Man, can you use two variety of yeast in one brew? Um, definitely. Um, dude, if only if only the White Labs was here. Um, yeah, but you can definitely do multiple. I mean, what's the White Labs yeast? Like that beer they brew with like ninety nine different strains in it. Oh, like Franken. Franken. It's some yeast. kind of Franken beer. Actually, I have it pulled up here. Yeah, they brew they brew a beer with literally ninety nine uh, different strains. Here, but yeah, yeah, you can dude. definitely do that. Franken yeast blend. Franken yeast blend. Coincidentally, I have a graphic. Of oh, it funny. Up. Yeah. yeah. So White Labs Franken yeast blend is literally like ninety nine strains. Um, but and I think it just lets them fight it out to the death. Whoever's the strongest wins. But yeah, I feel like people co pitch. Maybe I don't know. It's not something I have a, a lot of knowledge about. Yeah. Yeast is still kind of a mystery to me. So we need to toast these, uh, the mallows, right? We do. Right we got, yeah, we have, go in the boil? we have, yeah, I mean, we basically have like 15 minutes, but we should probably do it. Let's go ahead and get her done. Yeah. So let's get it. I need to set up a marshmallow cam. This is the issue. Um, let me, I'll bring that. Over take it. Yeah, I'd rather not put it on that. 
Okay. So we're going to move our boil station over after I lock the table down. Oop, it was already locked down. May or may not burn the office down. Yeah. Okay, move this guy over. We're gonna set up marshmallow toasting station. Do you have that? Oh, you got it, sweet. Guys, thanks for um, not doing the work you're getting paid to do right now and tune into our live stream and stuff. Actually, it's 4.45. I think it's personally reasonable that, per perfectly reasonable that you stop and you just leave anyway. But brewing this marshmallow milk stout, we brewed it before, we loved it. So we're making these new one gallon kits. This was obviously like top of our list for something we wanted to add. I'm gonna put this here so you don't forget. Okay, so we're near the end of our boil and about, we got 12 minutes left. 12 minutes left in the boil. Um, It would be interesting if, That's, well, so we had, we, no, oh, never mind, I'm not gonna get into that. What's that? Abort. <laughs> Abort. The stout has some booze <laughs> in it, man. No, it's just Test be, batches, 100%. One gallon batches are awesome for test batches. All right, so here, I'll put this, I'll do this here. Yeah. Are they gonna get a nice view we, of the we, toasted marshmallows? We did the reverse on oh, this one, we did a, do you have the what? Oh yeah, you got the close-up cam going. Not yet. Okay. Um, we did it. We did the reverse. We did a five-gallon batch to start with this one. If That's you haven't true. watched the marshmallow milk stout video, Aiden edited that video and it was really funny. Aiden did some mystical things. It was great. Yeah. So. But it's a really good beer. Yeah. I would say if you haven't brewed it, pull it up on the uh, YouTube's or website. So did That's you a just, good fall fall recipe. Sorry. Did you just spread these all out just like I that? I gave it. I gave it a thin. Thin. And you didn't burn the parchment at all? No. Okay. You did do it outside. I did do it outside. Yeah, we are, we're going to do it inside I mean, this time. But you can, I can't burn this down, but you can. How so? Well, you can't yell at yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could, but I wasn't trying to get my name yelled on at. The deed. <laughs> do you guys uh, any, do any projects at breweries? We did one with Dissolver, yeah, which was fact, really cool. They rebrewed the Here to Hammer is what it was called, and I think it's actually on tap right now. Oh, really? I think Here to Hammer is on tap again. If I'm, if I got this right, I think they just released it like so two days ago. If you're in Asheville, if you're in Asheville, go down to Dissolver, Here to Hammer. But yeah, we did a video with them. Um, you can find it on the channel. But super good dudes make really good beer. They always have at least one like. Uh, like side, cask, a side pole. A side pole. Yeah. And then we we also, if you missed it, um, did a. Oh, that trick. We're doing a partnership. Uh, we're doing a fun project with White Labs. Oh, French says. Do I not have the yeast here? I have the yeast. What are you looking for? The uh, the White Labs yeast. Oh, it should be in there in the pullout drawer. Bro, I don't know, man. Uh-oh. Okay, skip. Next next subject. I'll look. Um, the Mythical Hammer. Anyway, we did a project with My Labs. We might have used both packages that we had. Actually, we did I, use both packages. This sent us a bunch of stuff, but we used both packages for the beer we brewed. Uh, so anyway, we're doing a, a yeast release with White Labs, Mythical Hammer. You can't get it just yet, but we're gonna announce it soon. So. <laughs> Wait, my, how, my hero how? OG, dude, are you watching this while you're driving? Is it? We got it? Yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this camera. And I'll show you the yeast that we're releasing with... Oops, that's not it. Yeah, so the White Labs project's really cool. Here we go. Can y'all see that? So it's going to be WLP 808. 808. Yeah. Um, and the only way to get it is to actually pre-order it on White Labs. Um, shoot me an email, and I, if, if you're interested, I'll, I'll send you the link, or you could probably just Google it. Um, but it's like kind of a limited edition run, and they're only going to make as many as pre-sell. Um, I think if you pre-sell it, you get like a pretty cool pin that they're doing that's like a collaboration, like half our logo, half their logo. Um, 
but it's basically um, a lager yeast that can be done under pressure or not under pressure. Um, so we've done a lot of testing with it. They've done a lot of testing with it. They have a ton of data points on it. Um, and we're super stoked. And I think we're going to do probably like an email blast too once like the pre-sales going. Yeah, definitely. So we'll, there'll be more information on it. But I would say if you're interested, definitely grab some because it's going to be maybe more than a one-time thing, but most likely a one-time so, thing unless it really sells well. So Morningstar, what's the yeast character? It's designed to be used uh, and pressurized. So, and it should be pretty clean, crisp, and dry. But if you add hops, it should actually accentuate those hops. So it's a blend of three things that did that, that, that will do that. And you can do it under pressure or not pressure, yeah. so. What's the yeast character? It's pretty clean. Oh, I gotta switch. The um, it uh, accentuates the kind of hops. We used it in kind of a hoppy pilsner, I believe. Is that what we brewed, hoppy pilsner? Uh, yeah. And really accentuated the hops. Marshmallow um, and engaged. Basically, it's gonna engulf on fire. Emmet hole in your head? I don't know what that means. Uh, Mr. Hero OG is on Merriman right now making a U-turn to go to Dissolver right yeah, now. Yeah, I saw that. That's amazing. Bro. Heck yeah. How is Flora doing? Um, I think good. She, she put out a video a couple weeks ago. Sounds like she was just kind of burned out and taking a taking a step back. Um, so hopefully, you know, she'll be putting some more content. Out. I know she's still brewing. This is what this is what everybody wants to see right here. It takes a while. Yeah. You basically have to get right up on it and just blow them out. Is what I kind of did. Okay. That's kind of what we felt like we were missing. It was just not enough char on not the last char. one. So, so if you're just tuning in, Kyle is uh, burning marshmallows, yeah, burn toasting. The, the, toasting marshmallows toast. for a toasted marshmallow stout. But the burning is honestly really nice in this beer because you got a lot of sweetness from the lactose. Um, and it kind of goes well with those darker malts. Um, but it kind of plays nicely with that sweetness. So don't be afraid to char your marshmallows. So don't be afraid to... Uh, so uh, somebody did a version of this beer in oh, a... Oh, is it still moving? Are we what? live? Everything good? Uh, yeah? Let's look. I don't know. Uh, somebody did a version of this beer and... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we're good. Okay. They, um, they toasted the marshmallows in their oven. Yeah. And it was like the most... And they took a picture of it. And it was like the most beautiful picture. And they emailed it to us. So I don't know, maybe like toasting them in the, the oven might be the move. This is a little more fun, I'm gonna say. The oven is, if you wanna do it in the oven, put it on broil, don't put it on a top shelf, put it in the middle shelf, and then one to three minutes, and then you should be good. But if you got one of these, it's, it's way more fun. I don't know, man, I'm doing pretty well here, man. We're gonna be back on the content train. Yeah, we're gonna be putting out oh, more videos. Um, we're playing on live streaming um uh, like i don't know once a week kyle yeah probably until the end of the year and then we'll be putting out some more like more of the old style videos as well um more shenanigans more shenanigans it's not to say that there won't be any in the live streams what's that this is definitely going to catch on fire in a second oh yeah kyle, so, greatest banjo inspiration um hmm I don't know. Let me think about that one. Mike Groves? <laughs> My buddy Mike, yeah. Is there a new Claw Hammer logo coming out? Yeah. I feel like Kyle's been teasing it for three years. <laughs> so um, our buddy Chris Vodica actually made a really sweet t-shirt, and we're like, you know what? That just should be our logo. So yeah, eventually I feel like everything will move over to that. Um... Is that right?
So if you, <laughs> I'm thinking about this banjo question. Um, if you're into like bluegrass and old time music, you need to look up the album, and I'm sure it's on Spotify. Back up and push by Jay and Ferris. I think it's Ferris Romero. Jay Romero. Back up and push. That dude is his banjo playing is just mind bending, and he does like every style. He does coal hammer. He does two finger. He does scrug style three finger, and the just the banjo and the arrangements on the album are <clears throat> awesome. So. That's it for the banjo. That's it for banjo talk. But and yeah, are the burnt ones going to change the color of the wort much? No, it's not at all. Black. It's pretty much black as it is, yeah. just due to the uh, specialty malts that we put in. And then the dark DME is pretty dark too. Yeah. But the specialty malts definitely are what are giving it that dark color. So it shouldn't change it too much. And I like a, I like a dark <laughs> stout. So you can get this um, butane fuel, by the way, on, uh, can, you see, can you see that? You can get this on Amazon. Let's see here. We ordered these on Amazon a while ago. At least you could. So, and then you can also get these torches on Amazon. But, you know, probably, probably just use oven. your broiler. Just use your oven. Yeah. You don't need to do this. It, it's more fun. Yeah. But at the same time, like, and we did some research. I don't think you want to do this with propane. Chefs typically will use butane uh, to, you know, to do their food toasting and whatnot. What is it like creme brulee? Creme brulee. Th does that mean anything to you? The Morning Star introducing Heights of Grass, 1976, is the album you want to check out. All right. Well, I'll is that check, a bluegrass album? I'll check that one out. Old time album. The Heights of Grass. It's probably I'm doing bluegrass. Like Scruggs. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm into more of like, you know, as you might imagine, uh, claw hammer style banjo, which is different from, from what you would call like bluegrass banjo, but. It's more like the deliverance. Bluegrass is kind of, actually bluegrass is like. More deliverance. Deliverance, but. Steve Martin. What did Steve Martin Steve play? Martin. Bluegrass? Um, I think he does both. Both, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is there any new albums anybody's been listening to that we should check out? Oh, Bella Fleck. Bella Fleck is incredible, yeah. I mean, I don't even consider him a banjo player. He's just like an alien. Yeah. Uh, that happens musician. to play the banjo. Yeah. I think, I feel like we probably, I think we saw Bella Fleck. Did you just watch, did you go to the Bella Fleck and Yo-Yo Ma uh, show that at, in Athens? Yeah. I think we saw that together, yeah. actually. There's and so then he shows. played with Chris Thiele from oh, that's right. uh, Punch Brothers as well. They did another that's show. That's right. And then 300 uh, batches in yeah. seven years? Who? Um, Bela Fleck? See, he is an alien. No, I, I'm not going to try and pronounce it. I brew at home seven years and made nearly 300 batches. Dang, man. That's amazing. Yeah, that's some dedication. That's well done. I don't know how many batches that is a year. That's a decent amount of brewing. Oh, lap steel. Heck yeah. That's probably right, one dude, of the hardest instruments. Just caught the parchment paper on fire. The uh, first time I saw lap steel was Old Hearts Club, which turned into the six part seven. And it blew my mind. I was like 13 or 12. That was a cool band. Dude, so good. So when I was a bike messenger in Cleveland for a minute there, um, I became friends with their drummer. I don't know if he was like their full-time, you know, if he was like the founding member or whatever. He was a cool dude. And kind of got me into that band. Spare some change. Spare some change. <laughs> Matt Eush. Matt Eush? I played bass, guitar. Okay, right on. So what do we got going on for the weekend besides YouTubing? Anybody brewing? Besides driving and watching uh, live streams. Oh, really? Who's doing that? Dude who said he was on Merriman. Oh, that's right. And was going over to do a U-turn to go back to Dissolver. A coffee blonde. Hmm. That sounds interesting. Oh, man. This is looking pretty good. I'd say toss him in. Toss him? All right. Cool. 
No more. We don't want more char. This is good. No, it's up to okay, you. Okay, we got a little <laughs> bit of char there and there. Maybe like just the perfect, you know, some part of the pint, you'll get that nice char. Nice. Yeah, lap steel's wild, man. That's awesome. It's probably one of my favorite instruments to listen to, honestly. All right. Disengaging marshmallow cam. Reengaging wide shot cam. All right, we're killing the heat. Actually, I'm gonna keep it on. Yeah. Just to, just until we stir stir everything in. I kind of realized having the heat on when adding the marshmallows helped out quite a bit. All right, cool. You want to slide so them if boys? You're just in? joining, and you're driving and watching this live stream right now, like the other dude was. <laughs> Um, we recommend not doing that. Who I don't see on here anymore, so maybe he... He's getting the beer. Maybe that didn't really work out for him. Oh, so we get the lactose as well. I meant, when does this... They both go in at the same time. Same time, okay. Yeah. We're I put marsh... those in, and then we'll put this in at Flame Out. Okay. We're bringing a one-gallon batch of marshmallow milk stout. It's one of our new, like, one-gallon kits that we, that we made. We're loving these one-gallon kits. We actually made it for beginners, but it just turns out this is actually really fun to bring one-gallon batches. And... This is one of our all-time favorite recipes, so we're super stoked to have this, you know, in some bottles around the office. And we're at the end of the boil. Timer just went off. Done toasting the marshmallows. What are we doing? Just dumping them? Yeah, I'll get the need paddle. The, uh, paddle? Okay. Only started a couple small fires. That stout's got some booze in it. Yeah, these marshmallows do look amazing, don't they, Adam? Yeah, okay. Minimal stickage, so what do we do? Just like I grabbed it like a burrito and just oh, we do have some stickage. We do have some stickage. Did you get the stickage? All right, hold on, dude. I don't, I'm not liking this the positioning here. Go, go up higher. All right, you're gonna have to maybe like oh, just gonna have to move so they can see it. Am I in the way? Yeah, actually, let me do no, this. I can't be in the way. Am I? No, because it's on the other camera. Oh, gotcha. Let me to hold it and yeah, switch cameras. It. Yeah, that's good. Hmm, I don't know. Did it's this, working. Did this work better when you did it? Or is this how it went? Uh, I had way more char So on it looks mine. like you're going to have a boil over here. All right, I'm going to switch cameras real quick. Disaster strikes. Um, I had more, like, straight up burnt. Which I think eliminated the stickiness somehow. So it was like less less heat, maybe. Maybe less heat, just more fire. Definitely way more fire. But how's outside? All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! How'd that glass not shatter? I don't know. It's still got beer in it, even. Oh my god! All right. Everybody's all right. You guys asked for it. This is what you wanted. You got it. What was that? Like a fourteen percent beer? Probably not the move. All right, switching to spill cam, kettle cam. I'm gonna have to clean this beer up. This is a realistic you know, brew day for sure. <laughs> you know, it's an easy extract. My extract brew day went so well this afternoon. Had a great time. And then Kyle and then breaks I got out 14% <laughs> stouts, 9% IPAs. Um, I guess I'll just, Add these in. Don't put that in just yet. No? No. You so wait. we have a whole collection of beer towels here. I'm just gonna toss them down That's there. That scared the shit out of me. Scared the shit out of me too. Yeah. yeah, definitely not for your Oh no. Fuck it, we'll do it live. Um, yeah, I, was, I can't believe that glass. It literally, I think it flew it up and flew landed. It flew and then landed. landed. It flew up and landed. There's beer everywhere, and there's still beer in it. I'm gonna add the lactose while I'm waiting. Okay. You, can, you guys can't. All right, we'll just cut that. At, we'll cut that in post. <laughs> can't see it, but we made a pretty glorious mess here. We. <laughs> what do you do? Just kick it? You're, no, it, it's not. Oh, it's not it's put not together. On. It's like gotcha. A, Friction fit situation that didn't work out. 
Yeah, it's not a chair for, it's not a step stool for standing on, it's a chair for sitting on. Anyway, anywho. Yeah. So, almost ready, hold on. Guys, <laughs> if you're homebrewers, this is, this is, you need one of these. If you don't have uh, a Swiffer, make sure to invest in one and a good couples counselor slash divorce lawyer. Whichever is more affordable. Yeah. <laughs> 1-800-Flowers. <laughs> All right. Um, Kyle is still doing CrossFit every day. Every day. All right. Almost done. That was really loud. Yeah, it was. Okay, cool. All right. Back to the marshmallows. I'm going to re-engage marshmallow cam. Okay. And... Finish adding these marshmallows. All right. Maybe we can like get this. Yeah, do that. Get these in there and then we'll kind of flip it. So we've brewed this. We've actually brewed it on another batch earlier. It's just earlier today even. I was sober for that one. <laughs> Went way better. But here, get that bottom one there and then I'll flip, just flip the whole thing. Okay. And Emmett just kind of did more of a quick char and and kind of just it was really actually more burnt but we kind of were thinking that might be good for flavor because we really liked like the burnt marshmallow flavor the half char like the char looks nice but it makes a mess yeah but so we did a slower char on this one but then it heated up the marshmallows a bunch and you know as you can see they're sticking to the parchment paper so which probably isn't the end of the world either take that into consideration if you're looking for a toast um then you're going to end up with a mess if you do it. Like, I can't see how you could avoid this, really, if you toast it like Broiler, slow toast it. maybe? I don't know. Well, it's still going to get... Sticky. Yeah, sticky. So here you go. Yeah. I mean, it's not a big deal. Just yeah. use, use some sort of... But if you just do a quick char, you know, quickly get them up to, like, basically burning temp and just blow it out, then you won't end up with this mess. So take that into consideration. Do with that what you will. So I'm going to make a Excuse boil me. over here real quick. Yeah, I just like to have a little boil going when adding the marshmallows. They seem to dissolve better. So boil is done. Back in the center here. Lactose maybe, has been added. Maybe broil would have been better. Choose your own adventure, Peaceful Prince. Last time I checked. You're free to brew a beer however you well, want. What probably would have been the best decision is if we just went down to Burial and bought some of their <laughs> beer. Just ordered one. Yeah. I've heard of melt them in a pot. Yeah. What about? Yeah. But you don't get any char with that though, right? And how do you get out of the pot? What? Marshmallows. I don't know. Like I like to melt them in a pot with like Rice Krispies and make Rice Krispie yeah. treats. Yeah. So if you let the silicone cool mat, or... that's probably the move. That's probably. I feel oh, like it's yeah. still I stick have though. Yeah, silicone mat. Mm. We might even have one here. Probably. Alright, next time. Toasting Whoever the part. made that suggestion, you're hired. Put them in the freezer? Probably. Oh, Spatula. that's actually, that's a good idea. Freeze put them. The, put the marshmallows in the freezer. Mm, so and many good ideas. See? Use a blowtorch. That's what we just did. Guys, if you haven't started your own brewing equipment, this a supply company. You might want to consider put them in the freezer. Your ideas are much better than this ours. guy's like, I'm the CFO of a multi billion dollar corporation. <laughs> okay, I decide airplanes. Um, right, so freezer that'd be a good move, yeah. So we're done with the boil here. Uh, what's the, and we've added our we've added our lactose, mm -hmm. we've added our marshmallows. Mm -hmm. Just pitch the yeast straight in there, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're just gonna pitch the yeast, so we gotta chill this and. Prepared today, yeah. We uh, we have a swap out. Yeah, we have a swap out. Actually, so here's how you will. Here's how we would recommend you chill this. And we did another. I guess it's like a, the Citra. If you look at our like Citra one gallon um, system, wow, that kettle matches pretty well. Um, we have we've done another one gallon brew day video, and you can see how we chilled the beer in that video. In fact, I'll just put that in the description here. 
Um, so essentially what you do is just fill a sink with some ice and water. You put the scale down there. You actually would put the lid on um, so you don't have any kind of things floating down in there and just leave it sit. Or you actually might stir it for a little while, but it'll, it'll cool down. Or you can put it in the fridge for three hours. Three and a half hours. Three and a half. And it will cool down to room temperature. So that's how you do that. Uh, to save you guys from having to watch uh, liquid cool down in a sink full of ice, we have pre-brewed this and cooled it down already and it's sitting here in a pot ready. And this is what you call in the industry, this is what you call a swap out. So we're swapping out. Because we know all those industry terms, clearly. Just Google we're it. industry pros. So, uh, yeah. So we're, we now have chilled wort. Same, we just brewed that same thing earlier today and we have it here, chilled wort in the kettle. Hopefully it's 70 degrees, but this is feeling, this kettle is feeling pretty cold. Yeah, the uh, wort was registering. <laughs> Dude, I like Emmett put a note on here for himself. Emmett from the past left a note for Emmett in the future. What's it take say? Take gravity, you don't you take gravity readings. See, that's why you make notes. Yeah. So yeah, I guess we need to take a gravity reading. That means we need a sterilized... Um, now we can just take it out of the spout of this into a thing. Oh, sure, okay. Wow, look at you. Big brain. This, has, this is pretty clean with PBW then star sand. So, all right, we have these new one gallon um, beer kits. This is like basically the heart of it because we're assuming you have, you know, some sort of a heat source at your house and you have a pot that you can boil some liquid in. What, what would you say, how many gallons is the, our, our pot here? We have maybe a two gallon and a three gallon. This Probably, is looking yeah. at least three right here. Yeah, I would, I would say that's right. It doesn't look like we have a ton of water, a liquid in here, isn't it? Well, boiled a little longer than expected due to the uh, the marshmallow incident of 2023. Okay. But we'll just top it up with top tap water. That's not a big deal. Um, Canal used his um, eye laser sights and saying three gallon. Yeah, I would agree with that. So anyway, uh, we're assuming you have a heat source and a kettle for brewing, something to stir with, and what you get with the kit is essentially a fermenter which um, has like a spout for bottling and a bung on the top for an airlock. You get a, a bung piece. and a three-piece airlock. So, And some star sand and PBW and stuff like that if you want, if you don't have any of that stuff. So what are we doing here? Dumping that out? Yeah. And this is this is star sand here, so I'm gonna dump just maybe a little bit more in there. Oh, it also comes with a cool sticker, which has our new logo on it. In theory, new logo. Okay, Very dump nice. it in here. Yeah. Are you well. sure you want to use that? Yeah. Okay. You positive? Hundred percent. Okay. Final answer. Final answer. Should I dump some on the floor to clean up the mess we made? Maybe. We. We. All right. So marshmallow stout. So that had star sand in it. Like I said, you can buy little tiny little vials of star sand that basically give you star sand enough for like five one gallon batches. Yep. You could do the same with the PBW. Yeah, so let's just make sure. This, this is, is just an uh, inexpensive is this induction cool? this is burner. Because it was just full. Um, so it's just a hot plate. Nothing, nothing too fancy. I'm feeling like if, like if I was at my house or we have a stove here, like you would just use your stove. It's designed to use a stove, but we can't really film our stove because it's in the corner. But for one gallon batches, this your regular stove top works great. Yeah. All right, so I didn't want to put something like really cool on that. that oh, is that so hot? Warm. Is it hot? A little bit. It shouldn't be, but it is. So dump the whole thing or try to hold a little bit back? I mean, you feel it out. Should we do, um, should we should we engage dump cam? Yes. All right, let's engage dump cam. Got to get it set up real quick. New brew, new brew day vids are in the works for sure. Keep an eye out for those. We're, we're definitely going to be doing more of those uh, this uh coming years we this, have stuck a little this break winter. yep 
And uh, but yeah, if you're just tuning in, we're about to transfer the marshmallow milk stout into our 1.25 gallon fermenter, and this will give us a gallon of beer, which is basically a 12 pack. So an easy way to brew a 12 pack. All right. And if we're short on liquid here, the nice thing with extract brewing is we just add a little bit of water, bring it up to your 1.25, which if you can see is right up here. So makes it makes it super easy. All right, cool. Ready? Dark beer season. I'm with you. Dark beer season is the best. All right, man. I gotta let, I'm going to let you... Uh, You're going to let me do it? Yep. <laughs> okay. Is there a reason for that? I feel pretty good. <laughs> okay. Did you just feel good on... I'm just going to dump everything. Yeah, I would. Dude, that's... Some that's thick. like motor oil. Dude, we're, we're going to have to add a lot of liquid to this. That's not nearly enough. Huh. That's all right. We'll add water. It's the beauty of extract. So we started with a gallon and a half. Okay. How much do we got there? I mean... Half? Not even? Yeah, so let's get some filtered water. This. So we might have to... We're just going to have to see how the second batch turns out. I'm assuming we're going to have to adjust the recipe. We could add more water. But with extract, it really doesn't matter. You can just add more water. So we either boiled off more than I thought we would. Word. Or... Um, but that is like motor oil. Yeah, she's a thick one. Beauty of extract, you just add some water, loosen her right back out. But yeah, you know, you're kind of trying to design it around a small, a small uh, kettle or a small, um, what do they call that, stock pot? So. Yeah, brewing software is not the best for extract. Yeah, designing extract recipes. But you also, but you also have to fit it all in a small. Yeah. Brewing kettle. So, so one of the reasons we're actually brewing this is to make sure everything's that good. It works out. Everything's good. So tell me where to stop this. Keep going. Keep going. Oh yeah, keep your way off. Keep going. Way more. Way, way more. more. Okay. Yep. A little bit more water. I'm gonna switch the camera angle. All right. And then I'm gonna get a thing to take uh, gravity reading with. Well, can you just uh, chill there for a second? Ah, uh, yes. All right, so we're short on our liquid volume by quite a bit. Which is gonna depend on what size kettle you have. You're gonna be limited to that. So you can either use less water like we did with a smaller kettle, but if you have a larger kettle, you can always add more water. Cause you're gonna be at a point where you're gonna be fighting like a boil over the entire time if you add too much. Where am I going there? Yeah, up oh, to I might here. have to do one more round then. All right. Yeah, I might have to do one more round. Yeah. Okay. We're getting, getting there. there. We're getting there, boys. What's the gravity? We will find out. Brewing software said like 10:56, so we'll uh, we'll see. Should have taken a gravity reading before the water. Probably should have. That would have been a good move. But Kyle gave me 14% stouts. We could, we, we could have made this a quad. A dunkle, nice. Yeah, that's a nice, a nice beer for this time of year. He made a toasted marshmallow pumpkin ale. Ooh. Mm, that, that sounds good. I'd like to see that recipe. Yeah. Jesse, that sounds awesome. Okay, so. I'm not a huge pumpkin ale, but that does sound nice. Remember the first pumpkin? Quarter. So we're just to that. All right, there? you're good. Okay, cool. All right, see, no problem, man. Dude. Nailed it. Nailed it. I mean, it's kind of how extract brewing works, though. So. Oh, yeah. It looks good. All right, cool. I need it. Do you think it's mixed? So I'm interested to see how the other one comes out. 
Probably the same. Volume-wise, you think it's going to be the same? Yeah. We did go a little bit over on the boil with that one. Yeah. Because it took a little bit longer to test the marshmallows than we were thinking. We probably started testing the marshmallows with like 10 minutes left in our timer. But it's not going to be... Yeah, so that grain bag, maybe it's absorbing more than I thought. That was my thought. It was going to probably I, absorb a lot of grain. But... Like water. Man, we could always start with... I mean, we were down way... It's, I mean... Where'd that grain bag go? It's in the sink. You're going to have to... If there's water on it, so... It's, it's fine. Um, it's, you're going to be limited by your, by your stock pot, so... Too sweet, too thick. Ooh, I ESBs mean, are nice. I agree. That's a good move. So, like, look at how big the green tank is, uh -huh. just relative to the volume of, you know, liquid. I guess when it's cooler, we could squeeze it out. Yeah, but there's, I mean, even if we would have squeezed it out, we still would have been way short. However, that's a lot of, it's a large sack. But if you look at our, the kettle we used for the second batch, yeah, you know, sure. it's just, you know, you can add more water if you have the room, I guess, is, is the move. All right, cool. So next steps. Gravity reading? I'm just curious. Sure. Um, that means do you, you have the Anton I don't. Gravitron? Smoked beers are now my top. Adding smoked plums in my porter. Huh. Smoked beers are good. I can't handle too much smoke. It, it, but they are nice. But like a nice back like a backdrop of smoke I can deal with pretty nicely. Well, a touch of smoke? Like, yeah, just like, not overpowering, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Gravity reading? Gravity reading. So, we're wrapping up this marshmallow milk stout. Um, rewind about 15 minutes if you want to see a beer explode everywhere. So we're at 72 degrees, which is perfect. Really? Wow, even with the yeah with 70 geez, dude we we nailed that part yeah nailed even it with like you know chilled um filtered water nice all right so brewmeister uh app engage turn the easy dens on Not super confident that it's actually connecting. Do you need something to squirt into? Okay. No, because I'm just going to put it in this guy here. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. let me grab my notes, see what we're actually shooting for. All right. See how close we are. Yeah, we don't really need to be Probably, this. Hopefully somewhat decently close. We're shooting for 1056. And I feel like... I do not have extract dialed in yet. Yeah. A little bit of trial and error. Okay, we're connect are we connected? We're connected. All right. If you'll see it. Engaging gravity measurement mode. Ooh, those, uh, well, the marshmallows, I didn't really know how to compensate for either. Yeah, I remember that was an issue on the first yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, so you probably can't see this. We're not way off. But, um, it says 1062. So it's going to be quite a bit, well, not quite, it's going to be a little bit more boozy than we were thinking. Well, yeah, I was shooting 1056 is why I was guessing on the marshmallows. It's going to be a quite a bit more boozy. 20% more boozy? So maybe we do a half of... Tell 1056? 1056 is what I was... Oh, well, that's not that bad. No, it's not too far off. Yeah. The, the marshmallows were kind of a crapshoot. I was like, I don't know how to... Yeah, okay. So I, maybe about close to 10% higher, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, cool. you could always not add all the marshmallows if you want a little less boozy, I guess. But I don't know who's going to do I that. I don't know why you did that. Holy smokes. I mean, we were just drinking, well, how much was this? That's 14%. Yeah, it feels like it. So what's 1056? Guys, do the math on that. No, it was 1060 something. No, sorry, 1062. Starting gravity at 1062, what do you think it'll finish at? 1014? 10, 10, 15? All right, so let's Probably. go 1062 to 10. Let's go, let's go down low. Let's go 1014. 1062 to 1014. And it, yeast in the beast. Stir it up. Yeah, we probably should. We'll do another test. We'll stir it up. Yeah, kind of mix we'll, it a little bit. We'll add the yeast sure. first. Right, so, I just didn't want to. Well, let me just do this. I'll put the lead on. I'll just kind of swirl it a little bit. Yeah, probably we'll good do another test. Yeah. We'll see where we're at. Probably uh, good call. Joe, keeping us honest. I like it. 
He's like, Emma's just trying to phone it in so he can go home. <laughs> a year and a half ago, I was fortunate enough to travel through Germany. Try to dunkel. Dude, yeah, Germany has some amazing beers. I would love to go back. I uh, had a great time when I was there. You think, probably. But I was also young and had a great time. I was in my early 20s. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, it was a great time. Okay, so... So he's got little Emmett logos. What's that mean? Ooh, Jesse is a member. Sweet. Dude, he's a member? Nice. Yeah. So he gets Emmett logos? He gets Emmett logos. Dude. He gets Emmett emojis. Nice. Jesse's the one that was doing um, a fun beer that I can't remember. Jesse, what were you going to brew? 7%? You've, I'm thinking 10 14, 10 Ooh, 15. Dude, this wort tastes freaking amazing. I mean, stout should have a little. Give you, I mean, actually, unless you're drinking a dry Irish stout, then you could drink like 80 of them and not be drunk. All right. All right, Open start her up again. Back up. So we, we kind of mixed it some. All right, so we're going to do one more gravity measurement for whoever asked for it. Holy crap. Because it was a valid point. Yeah, I mean, well, I feel like it was, pro uh, you know, whatever. Who knows? But okay, we're I'm, closer. I'm afraid that this is actually going to blast everywhere. Something ain't right. Is it got... Is it's, it I feel like it's clogged. Oh, shit. There's no... Way. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kyle. Can't take you anywhere. It's showing right. 1058 now, though. But I don't think anything went into it. Okay, that's weird. I've not seen that happen before. Like somehow we clogged it looks, the well, car. There's some, I can see some solids in there. Probably some hops. Hmm, weird. God, how do you fix this problem? Oh, great. There we go. There we go. Perfect. I think we're gonna be closer now. Whoever said all to right. stir it, well done. You win. Yeah, 1058, so. Thank you. Pretty Cause, close. Because all the solid, the the extra the um what's it called True. when you boil something down and you make like uh extract like the um if you boil down let's say um sugar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're uh condensing it like making it stronger like condensed milk like basically sweet and condensed milk is where i'm going at so 1058 so what were, what were we shooting for 1058 1056 is what we're shooting for. oh dude all right money Okay, so let's try this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it does have some hops in it, but it's better, but it tastes really good. Oh, it's going to be nice. Yeah. Concentrate. Thank you, Chris. Jesus. <laughs> That's <what> Christ <laughs> Almighty. <laughs> Woo! I was thinking you were looking for like a reduction, like a balsamic <laughs> reduction. He's getting fancy with it. No, I was just looking. <laughs> I was just looking for concentration. Concentrate. It's concentrate. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Jeez, Louise. Cool. Um, yeah. yeah. You, can, you taste the marshmallow in there. Yeah. Still, I don't know, man. It's not. We'll find, we're, we did two batches. One was really toasty. One wasn't as toasty. It was more char. Um, well, that bitterness will fade away. One was away. charred. One was toasty. Right. But I'm just saying, like, you don't really get the charred flavor right now. So I doubt it's going to be any more charred flavored. You know what I mean? Once it's done. We can always up the chocolate malt. I bet yours, that's, I that, bet yours is going to be better. Or the, the, uh, no, I'm just saying, like, burn the marshmallows. This is what I'm saying. Burn the shell of them, yeah. Yeah, burn. So is we'll, this we'll have to do an update the, on this. Yeah, it is. There's a five-gallon all-grain batch on the website. Just search on, if you click on blogs and then search, just search for marshmallow stout. Yeah. I think it's called toasted marshmallow stout. Yeah, marshmallow milk stout. <clears throat> it's the all-grain version. This is just a simple one-gallon extract. Yeah. Um, they will be for sale probably in the next 10 days on the website once we dial in the recipe a little bit more. Yeah. So if you want to brew, so we're brewing mar marshmallow milk stout here, one gallon batch of it. If you want to brew it now and you have a brew system at say in the five to 10 gallon neighborhood, and you could also scale down to one gallon for yourself, but we have a five gallon um, recipe on our website. There's actually a video for it as well. So you can check that out. And I think the recipe might even be in the video description. 
So you can do that if you want to brew it right now. Also, this one gallon batch here that we're making, we're, we've made it on our new one gallon brew system. This is going to be a recipe kit. We don't actually have the recipe kit um, for sale just yet because we're, doing, we're still doing test batches of it. We always need test batches of stuff before we make it into a kit. And if you were watching you know, earlier before we added water to top it off, we were really, really short. Um, so somehow we, um, one gallon batches are just hard to calculate. So once we get that dialed in, we might even make one more batch. We will have the kit for sale on the website and you can buy this little fermenter as well. So we're done. Did we add the yeast? Oh, uh, we didn't. We did not add the yeast. So that might help. are we going to do like half a, you can do half a pack. Half a pack. All right, dude, I'm going to, I'm going to engage um, yeast can for this. My even close to being on my shirt. I don't know, dude. I'm afraid of this. Um, you guys hear me? Sorry. Box now that I almost died on earlier. Yeah, we're hoping for fall to hit here soon. It's been in the 80s all week so far. I'm not. I'm perfectly happy with 80 degrees. Oh, dude, give me a high of 67. So we're going to add yeast because that's needed. So 1058 is our starting gravity, which is awesome. Whoever said to start, thank you. I was just being lazy, and this came out to, uh... hey, thanks for uh, being a member, Jesse. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're offering memberships now. We're, 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 we haven't been making um, like full brew day videos. It's just you know, like we were saying earlier. It's a lot of effort, and it's kind of expensive. Uh, but it's fun, so we thought maybe we'll do like a member thing, and if enough people join, um, we are going to start making full brew day videos again, but, you know, we can make more. Anyway, we got this one gallon done here. I'm going to pop this off. Do you want to add it? Where did the scissors go? They're around here somewhere close. I think I, right there. So we're going to add the yeast. Should we shake it first? Aerate it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to aerate it first. So we also just did a video on aeration. Um, we had uh, Devin from White Labs here in the office and we did a beer uh, with him with the new Mythical Hammer yeast. Can you take that lid off there? And um, Emma and I also took like a two day class at White Labs and of course we all know that aeration is important for beer, but it was really interesting to sit through two days and listen to exactly two days of classes and listen to exactly why um, aeration is important for fermentation so you know oxygen need I'm sorry yeast need that oxygen in the early stages of fermentation to basically just build up a healthy large population of yeast that will then start to convert sugar into alcohol once the oxygen runs out so it's important to have it you know, it's important to aerate your beer before you add the yeast. And you want about eight to 10 parts per billion. I believe it's billion. billion. Yeah. And you can get that by simply shaking a fermenter for a minute or two. You can we get to eight? Yeah. We're shaking. Yeah, like okay. low eights. And if you're, at, if you're at higher elevations, actually it's harder to get to eight. If you're at sea level, you can definitely get to eight. But you know, shaking it for at least a minute and ideally like two is what you want to do. The other thing that we learned was that zinc um, is important as well for uh, fermentation, for like building a healthy yeast colony. What was that? Zinc. Oh, zinc, yeah. Remember, and so like, yeah. just, you know, we've had issues in the past. Like we did a video at one point, I think it was called like fixing bad beer. And it had like an acid aldehyde issue. It tasted like apples. Mm -hmm. And that's not the first time we've ever had that happen. And um, I just like, think I tend to be sort of like particularly You have a sensitive, sensitive palate for that. And I hate it. It's disgusting. So anyway, what we learned was that adding a little bit of zinc to your boil kettle, like right at the end of the boil, will um, eliminate the, the risk or at least greatly reduce the risk of having elevated acid aldehyde uh, levels and like an apple egg character in your finished beer. So, what do you think? We good? 
Kyle was paying attention during those classes, apparently. <laughs> I did my best. I took notes. All right. So, toasted marshmallow, stout, chilled, warped, in the fermenter. So we give a six gram packet with these, so you only really need to add half a packet. Okay. What kind of yeast is this? Just an ale yeast. Just ale yeast, yeah. Okay. Just your standard, probably. Month, and so I'm, I'm doing half. Yeah. Ballpark, it's not. Ballpark and half. Not, not crucial. Another thing we learned was like it's, it's fairly difficult to overpitch yeast. It's easier to underpitch yeast. And there's certain certain beer styles you want to underpitch for. Right. Your Belgians, if the, the Belgian triple guys here, a lot of times you stress those Belgian yeasts out, you're going to get a little bit more of that character because it's under stress. All right, so that's half. Sweet. Get the old lid back on there. Yeah, underpitching uh, Kvike is is a thing as well. We've to get of, more fruity esters, well. or and you know, like yeah, like the would you say like the hefeweizen yeast? You can you get more of a banana. I, w I would uh, assume so. If you underpitch um, half yeasts, so yeah, like that was kind of one of the things we learned is that underpitching stresses the yeast, and you know you do run the risk, I guess, of potentially like a stuck fermentation if you like severely underpitch. Is that right, Emmett? But you yeah. do get more flavor. Now, is that flavor going to be desirable or undesirable? I think it depends on the yeast strain. So, that's that. Whoa, dude, we brewed another beer and didn't burn we the made, office down. We made an extract brew day look impossibly hard. <laughs> Almost forgot to add the extract. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, really, the, the only thing, like, the really bad thing happened was... Uh, Beer the spillage. Yeah. I don't even know how much you'll be able to see that, but so we're sitting we at we're sitting at seventy two, which is fine, dude. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, but yeah, this is a one point two five, and we've kind of found we have this like space, so like all your true will be below the uh, the valve there, and you can easily just bottle right off of there. So yeast and the beast verbally abuses us. Yeast to stress it out. All right, I Got like it. it. Okay, we just you, got you demonetized. Kvike. Yeah, man. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I haven't messed around too much with yeast. I've always just been like slow and steady, re, you know, just do what's been, been kind of told to you over the years. Yeah. So it's kind of fun to start playing around with it. Sweet. Well, dude, maybe, I don't know how long this was. But uh, let's, uh, let's, do you want to show the keg fittings off in case anybody joined? Oh, yeah, sure. Just give a so, quick update. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've had a lot of people asking about this, uh, the keg. We got a video coming out. Yeah, we have a video coming out and I kind of did just like a short here recently on, on the keg. Let's see if I can do this one more time without knocking it over once again. But um, we've been working hard on wrapping up the keg. We have finally reached the point where all of our prototypes are now in metal and they're, they fit perfectly. And I'm just, to be honest, it's freaking awesome. Like we're so excited about this. We were just kind of in awe the other day as we were like putting these parts on and kind of messing with them. So yeah, you just got like the, you have a tool on an oversized PRV and to take the fittings off, the specialized tri-clamps, you, you know, ideally you're gonna pull up and you're going to depressurize just like you would with a normal PRV. But even if you don't, as you unscrew this, it's actually gonna release pressure before the threads completely disengage. So there's really no way to like improperly depressurize. And then um, the, the tool is cabled to the keg, which is important for safety reasons um, because we don't want you just like, you know, the whole point of this is that you have to use the tool that's like in right. the PRV. So you would never want to use a, t a tool on one keg to take fittings off of another keg. Which is I don't why, know why which you is would why do it's that. Tethered, yeah. But that's why it's tethered and it will be permanently tethered. And it's actually nice because you're never gonna lose this. Right. And then I don't know about, you know, like I, I find thumb screws to be 
I just don't really like, I don't prefer thumb screws. It's kind of hard to get them tightened on as, well, as much as you want. Especially and, like under pressure fermentation where you want a really tight, right nice seal. This is super, super easy. Yeah, so you have to use this tool. So I'm actually gonna tighten it to like where you would actually need to have it to make a proper seal. You know, once you get it to that point, like you can't take this off with your fingers. You have to use a tool. So, which is by design. By design, yes. So because we want to make sure you're depressurizing the keg before you take the the nut off yeah. of the tri clamp. And we've so, gotten a bunch of flack, kind of, for taking the safety safety Nancy route on this. But yeah, I, I even, it's just I one of those care. things when yeah. when things are under pressure, it's extremely dangerous and. The video, I don't know if you've seen it, where it almost hits Kyle in the face. Yeah. You know, we can't be sending this out to the to the public mm -hmm. when we designed the initial one and are well aware of the pressure and still screwed it up. Yeah, so. you can hate as much as you want. I don't I don't care at all. Right. Because, you know, when, you know, like people's safety is on the line and then our reputation is on the line, but more importantly, it, it, people's safety. Yeah, safety is first. And, and we have anything to do with that, we're definitely going to err on the side of safety. Yeah, and I'm an idiot. Like I almost forgot to put extract in yeah, here. Yeah, like, you're gonna make in a brew day. Yeah, exactly. You know, you just you do the wrong thing. This way, you can't remove it without releasing the pressure. So right, and then one more thing, we we put like an L on the end of the tri clamp here because we talked to professional brewers and they said like the number one risk with tri clamps in a prof professional brewing setting is that you just actually you hit the and you hit the thumb screw. It's not tight enough. And it's it pops not tight over. enough, and it literally just comes off. Because you can get a tri clamp tight without it being like too tight to too open. tight. Yeah. So there's no way you can do that. You actually have to release it to the point where like this is loose now the pressure's off and then you can take this off take and remove the you know your cap or your hop dropper or whatever you have on so that's that's the quick update we'll be putting a, a longer one out but if you are interested they are for round two is for pre-sale on the website yeah. so um, yeah it's been such a long journey we're sorry that it's taken so long but i think at the end of the day like this is awesome because we've changed the handles as well so and you're not going to blow a tri clamp through your brain which is probably like i mean like oh i brewed beer i killed myself yeah <laughs> not worth it not worth so, it because you won't but this is a gallon of yeah. marshmallow milk stout we'll have the ingredient kit live on the website probably next week about finish dialing it in update the recipe a little bit but we'll have that for sale hopefully in a week or so yeah and uh we'll be doing more live streams yeah well cheers happy friday thanks for watching yeah thanks for hanging out nice super work. fun yeah only four mistakes, one spell, and we made it through. Yeah. See ya. Clawhammersupply.com. <laughs>